time for the fan favorite segment, the fans and where we discuss international football review and give preview to what happened in midweek in terms of UEFA Champions League football and even Europa League. And this particular afternoon, we honored to host an amazing guest, abled differently, a man who's been passionate about football, started doing punditry on his podcast via YouTube, and when he lost his sight, he stopped, but he's here with us this particular afternoon to give his insights on what he thinks about European football uh, with focus to the team he supports Manchester City he says this time around they are going for Treba I'm talking about Jimmy Waiyaki good to see you man yes, good afternoon yes. good how does it feel being here you. it feels amazing actually it feels really good yes I've been waiting for this <laughs> <laughs> but now it's here with us this particular afternoon yes, just yes. Uh, briefly talk to us about your journey of losing sight and how it went down uh, with your podcast well, actually, the podcast came after I lost my sight. Ah. It wasn't before. Before I lost my sight, I was, study, I was studying media. Oh. I was in the university, so I had to drop out because of that. I had to change my course since my major was in film production. Ah, good course. Yes. So after that, I started the podcast at home with my friend. And then school came in. I had to go to Machakos where we went to learn how to be mobile, to learn braille, how to do my business basically. And then that never, we never got back to it as, as per se, yeah. But football has been part of my life since a small boy, you know, first love is football. <laughs> Everything is football, yeah. I support Man City, of course. Joined it because of Carlos Tevez actually. Huh? Never told people that. I joined because of Tevez. I think he was the best striker at his time. But very controversial. Better than Wayne Rooney? I think, yeah. He was underused. Debatable, though. Yeah, debatable. But Rooney played more than he did. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That's a nice intro. And Tyras Wayaki, of course, is still here with us. And coincidentally, is the uncle. Yes, his dad is my first cousin. And really, I'm amazed that there's someone in the family who wants to take after me. Uh, I started football analysis in the year 2000 on Metro Television, and because it was a sister station to the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, I also doubled on Kenya Broadcasting Corporation doing soccer analysis, which I started uh, pretty much soon after making my debut on Metro Television. We did the World Cup in 2002 and UEFA Champions League, Africa Cup of Nations, international friendlies. And you went Cup. overseas a little bit All before you came back. Man. Stop, 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 stop <laughs> failing to tell us about that. <laughs> yes, but you saw... How we went to UK and uh, slightly supported Nottingham Forest, my team. No, 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 you were the <laughs> <one>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all those things, and aside from this, I do writing, I do loads of, and loads of writing. Actually, I began writing before I went into broadcast, and Jimmy here also does writing. Coincidentally. So coincidentally, coincidentally. It's funny how blood works. Yeah. So I have someone in the family, the next line, the next generation of the family, mm -hmm. who's taking after me, and I did not groom him in any way or shape. Any form It was whatsoever. automatic. No, this is not a dynasty. It's a standard it's one a, day. It just happened. And so let's 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 get straight into times. it. And Manchester City now will mm -hmm. be playing Paris Saint Germain, the French money bikes, in semi final of UEFA Champions League football after aging out Borussia Dortmund. A yes, few people yes. didn't expect City to perform the way they performed during the return leg, following what happened in the first leg where Dortmund, uh, albeit, gave them a scare. Mm -hmm. But this is this was this was City's game to win. Yes. Nobody, okay, as much as Dortmund may have had a bit of an edge, but Manchester City, I think it's time they pull out, they pull out the stops in the good games, yeah? The bigger, it's time for, for Man City to shine. This Champions League has been evading Man City for too long. Too long, I mean... Actually, they have never won it. We've never won, yeah. That's too long. <laughs> <laughs> Still long. Yeah, I mean, now we have Pep, we've had arguably the best team, I mean, in the 11, the best 11 pick of the season, I mean, you get Man City players all over that team for the past 9, 10 years, yeah? So this is the time, this is the time they're all driven, they're motivated, and this is the season. 
this is the season. You were saying off air. You were saying off air how you know most of your legends have left the yeah. club without winning a silverware in UEFA Champions League football title. That is Carlos Tevez himself. Yes. Uh, yeah. Who else? Uh, yeah. Vincent David Company. Silva. David Silva. Yeah, yeah. Now Sergio Aguero has announced he will leave this season. Yeah. Everybody. You everybody think this is the time. This has to be the time. Well, there's still that to end the decade. Let me say. We have to end the decade on a high because this has been Man City's decade. Yeah. Four Premier League titles. Yeah, it's I think four Carabao Cups, a few FA Cups. Yeah. But then you get to the Champions League and we get semi final as our best performance. And I'm a City fan, but they can choke. Man City knows how to choke at the worst <laughs> moments. <laughs> I mean last season against Lyon. Yeah, in the in the Champions League, we saw what happened. It's like they were not even there. So I don't know, but I have hope. I have hope. This is it. This is it. This is it. About you, Teras. You watched the quarterfinal stage of UEFA Champions League football. I mean, more Real more. Madrid. I mean, more edging more. out I Liverpool as expected. Now Eden Hazard will be facing his former employers Chelsea at the semi-final <laughs> stage. Do you think Thomas Tuchel can continue with this scintillating? Fum. Well, yes, but I'm in mourning. He's celebrating about Manchester City and he's <laughs> full of hope. Bayern Munich, my childhood team, I've been supporting them close to 40 years. They lost midweek in the UEFA Champions League, got booted out by PSG. Obviously, the Lewandowski effect, his absence might have, I think, definitely played a role mm. in their being eliminated, though a bit blunt up front. And you know Lewandowski, his other name is Lewagolski because he knows how to do the business and his absence might, might must have cost us. So yeah, that was hard to take. Over to your question, to Kel versus PSG. That one definitely is not easy. Versus Madrid, Real. Versus Real Madrid, yes. sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, versus Real Madrid, obviously that one is not easy because Real Madrid, whenever Z Zidane is back in, in the hellmanship of the squad, he's He's got the Midas touch. He's always able to bring out the best of Real Madrid. You remove him from that position, same players, new manager or different manager, and the same team is not able, able to pull out all those stops. But when they have Zidane, he seems to have this magic wand that he waves around and takes Real Madrid to ecstasy. I've silently, not on air, ruled him out before in previous Champions League and he's gone out to win a treble of Champions Leagues. I'm not going to rule him out again, but at the same time, I'm not going to underestimate what Chelsea are able of pulling out now. But I think the scales are heavily tipped towards Real Madrid's favor. Paris Saint-Germain, the effect of uh, Kylian Mbappe, the wonder kid, amazing boy, and I think he's done very much at his age, of course, in partnership with uh, you know, Neymar who was voted as the Champions League Player of the Week. Do you think it worked magic in their favor against the opponents? It most likely did. I mean, their chemistry is too good. Because uh, football aside, those two, I think, have a way of communicating in a way that the ball just moves very freely, and then at the pace of Mbappe, it's just, it's amazing. I don't know. But I expected more from Bayern. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Especially with Muller. Yeah. And yeah. Chopper Moting yes. now replacing Lewandowski up front. Yes. And he scored two goals home and away for his team against uh, former employers because initially he played for PSG. Do you agree with he, uh, your uncle? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lewandowski absence was a big setback. Lewandowski, yes, yes. I mean, with the number of goals he puts in for the club, any game without him, you, you, you can't help but miss him. Because, like, if he was there, you just, you can only imagine, yeah. If Lewandowski had played, you can imagine endless possibility, endless, yeah. But, I don't know. They, they still had a chance in that game. They still... They were still there. Leroy but Sane, you are former player now featuring for <laughs> Bayern Munich. Do you agree that he was wasteful alongside Kingsley Coman on the flanks? Well, he wasn't all that good. That's the thing. He was just... It wasn't his night, I, I guess. Let me say it wasn't his night. Let me not call him wasteful. 
Because <laughs> 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 it was just a bad day to be in a buy and shut. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you expect uh, at the semi-final stage? Who, where do you place your money? Oh, when I look at it, City against City, City against <laughs> PSG, that is a pulsating clash oh that you know a lot of people that are looking forward to. Mouth yes, but when you look because at it's how, a derby for it's a derby pitting, you know the money bags. Uh -huh. When you look at how PSG are playing now, yeah, you would have to be unrealistic to rule them out. They're playing for They're very ruthless. Oh goodness. Absolutely. That's the word. But not ruthless in an unkind way. Mm -hmm. Ruthless in a very execute executional manner. They're doing the business. Everything's working for them like clockwork. Mm -hmm. And they you you cannot believe this is a team that plays in the French League, which doesn't get much respect as it ought to get. You think they are from the Spanish La Liga or some team that's owned by a billionaire in England, they're playing mm. so, so well. The touches, the quickness of those touches, the capacity to run to at the opponent whenever you lose the ball and get it back and then counter-attack. Mm -hmm. It's a joy to watch PSG. When was the last time you had someone say so? It's a joy to watch PSG. Well, it is. They're playing... You look at them at midfield and you just want to cry. And then you get to the final third, definitely cry. Look at what Mbappe is doing, the link-ups with Neymar. It's, in fact, Neymar, he, um, mm -hmm. you guys just spoke about Leroy Sane having a bad day at the office. Neymar was like man of the match, but he didn't have the best of days in the office. Yeah. Imagine what it would have been like if he had the best of days. That day. side is... A Let's talk day. about Bayern. Uh, Munich, not Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, despite the absence of their regular centre backs, Sergio Ramos and <laughs> you know Rafael Varane, mm -hmm. they still did very well, of course, getting deputized by Nacho and Militao, and of course, their midfield trio of Tony Cruz, Luka Modric, and 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 Wales and uh, Casemiro also worked very well against the opponents, Jim. I mean, Real Madrid. I just, okay, I like Real Madrid silently. I just never say it out in public. Uh, their midfield is great. Their attacking is great. If you add also like Benzema and... And uh, Vinicius Jr. Yes. I mean, it's hard to fault Real Madrid. Any game Real Madrid walk into, especially Champions League, as Tyra said, <laughs> <laughs> it's, they have to have the upper hand. It's them or it's, you know... It's Real Madrid's trophy to lose, by the way. This Champions League? Yes. I mean, I may be a City fan saying we'll win, but look at the stats with Zidane and Champions League. I think they are the favorites, but we just have to prove them wrong. Hopefully, Chelsea does that. Chelsea should stop them. The, with the game Chelsea are playing right now, Chelsea are probably the team to beat anywhere. Yeah, because Chelsea are... Clinical and ruthless at this point in time. Yeah, so I don't know. Chelsea, but I hope, I'm hoping for an English final, Man City Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, Though, and talking about the uh, English final in UEFA Champions League football, <laughs> the second tier of uh, Europe. A club a football competition that is uh, Europa, Europa League. League. There yes. is also two English Premier League clubs mm -hmm. at the semi final stage Arsenal and United, after of course aging out the opponents, Lata Prague and Granada, respectively. What do you think about United? Uh, United meeting mm -hmm. Arsenal at the final? Not if necessarily, uh, uh, <laughs> but that is a matter of possibilities. <laughs> Well, the potential of that would be great if mm -hmm. they were to meet in the final. Of course, they are meeting Roma, while Arsenal yes. is meeting Villarreal. Yes, mm -hmm. but obviously, ultimately, the, the tail end would be the final if they get there. And the prospect of two English clubs doing so is quite real. Mm -hmm. And it would be nice for the banter. But, <laughs> but, but for me, really... Uh, just for the banter, but not for the yeah. for good yeah. of... Maybe even for the good of, because it's a one-off. It's not a two-legged affair. It's yes. do or die. Yeah. But obviously there's the semi-final to settle. And Arsenal, Villarreal, that's mouth-watering. And um, Unai Emery is there. Uh, mm -hmm. Former manager of Arsenal is now at Villarreal. He knows Arsenal in and out. 
he would definitely try to pull all the stops to try and stop them. Arsenal also get to uh, uh, have a fair share of uh, events by trying to pull all the stops to stop him because they know his mind. They know what kind of guy he is. And to be honest, I don't fancy Arsenal's chances against Villarreal because Arsenal is a moody team. Today they show up they to hot and cold. And cold. Mm -hmm. You can't afford to do that at this level. So they are at go with Villarreal. Then there's Manchester United, AS Roma. The thing about Manchester United right now, you know what to expect. Fire. They've got a terrific squad. The manager is kind of lukewarm. He's not quite there. But he's got a fantastic squad of players. They now know what it means to don a United jersey. AS Roma, the thing about them, you never know which AS Roma will turn up. Yes. And AS Roma can really, really turn up or fail to turn up. But more towards really, really turning up. So that one, the team that wins the first leg or gets that advantage the advantage. of their away goal that first leg is very very key yeah for slight the, margins for the yeah the slight margins that one and and uh, jamie arsenal responded emphatically <coughs> against the opponents of course in the war against racism which is now an international monster you remember when they were kneeling down as a strategy to f fight and combat this vice the opponents <laughs> didn't do that and they responded very well by you know Smashing them. Smashing them. <laughs> <laughs> I think they should probably take the fight against racism further. I don't know how far it goes, but I don't think kneeling down <laughs> does anything for anyone. I like that. the game. Because, yeah. I mean, they've been kneeling down for, is it a year or, or more? Year. <clears throat> and then the other day, was it a Rangers player who was racially abused? abused? And this is after all the kneeling down. So they need to put stiff penalties in place. Just like docking points? Docking points, finding, I mean, I don't know why they're scared to find these guys like 5 million euro, 2 million euro, you know, these guys can afford it, the clubs can afford it, you know. If you give people low fines, what, 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 and then like the, if it's a fan, they get a stadium ban. That really doesn't do anything to, to curb this racism. They need to put a firm stance and just stamp it out as for the team that refused to kneel down well they should have i mean <laughs> they paid for it they dearly. paid for it and, and social media owners also need to put their foot on the pedal and say look we'll take you out of these streets if you keep on uh, yeah. sending out those racist messages because if you look at this racism there's no football fans in the stadium, right? right stadiums yeah. right now. But yeah. it's online. You've seen how even Tiro decided been, uh, to, yes, it's been to by, on get social, off social media. media. Yeah, it's been driven on social media. And social mm. media owners, they have the power to turn you off. They have. They're not doing enough. They really must put their foot on the gas and say, from. I mean, it's it's actually mm -hmm. late in the day, but from now on, yeah. you send out those racist messages. At your own peril. We'll, we'll, yes. yes, we'll we'll take you out of these streets and we'll hand you over to the authorities. And hopefully the authorities will take it up from there. Another talking point this particular week has been, you know, after United beat Tottenham last weekend on Sunday, I think there has been some latest revelations from Paul Pogba uh, on Jose Mourinho, his former coach, saying that his man management style of coaching was, you know, <laughs> not uh, interesting and he's taken to several forums to castigate the Portuguese international for, mm -hmm. you know, the bad relationship he has had with players and like the cordial friendship he enjoys with his current boss, Oleguna Solskjaer. Do you think, Jimmy, that ought to have waited a little bit so that he paints it into his wrong book rather than, you know? Yes, he should have waited, just kept this till after retirement and just stayed with it because what we, if we expect now Mourinho to clap back and, and Mourinho is quite he would. rude at this. He would. And Mourinho might even, you know, Mourinho's words just <laughs> come out as they come. And with Mourinho, it's if you do what Mourinho says, you get the titles. So Mourinho can also argue this is just an uncooperative player who expected more when there was no more to be offered. Yeah? But I can't really say too much on that, so, but uh, I don't know. I'm waiting for the response. 
<laughs> the response will be very interesting. And definitely it will be very harsh. Mm -hmm. But how come players complain of having bad blood with Jose Mourinho? Even we've seen what Danny Ross, the left back, is going through. He's, uh, he's not been getting regular playing time at Spurs. Uh, over you know his bad relationship at some point going to jose Mourinho's office to ask how comes he's not uh, uh, regularly getting played i think uh, w what is it uh, is jose Mourinho just being over realistic and sometimes he gets quoted out of context <laughs> i tend to think so <laughs> and Mourinho expects more than the players can offer at some at times i guess and if you can't meet his overly high expectations Mourinho tends to not care who you are, not care that Danny Rose has been at the club, has done this, has done that. It's cooperate or stay out. And I mean, I, if I'm the one talking here and you tell me, you know, like stay out, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be happy, you know. And morale in the team goes down, everything just messes up. It's like a two-sided coin. There's those players who would die for Mourinho. They'll take a bullet for him. They love him. They adore him. Mm -hmm. They've won trophies for him, not for their clubs. They were, they were playing for Mourinho. They loved him. And then now there's this new player who just doesn't see eye to eye with Mourinho. I think it's a generational thing. The earlier generation <coughs> excuse me, got on pretty well with Jose Mourinho. They were as tight as thieves, really, really close. But now there has emerged a new generation that you need to talk to differently from the, the way you used to address the previous generations. They won't take uh, being shouted upon lightly. That's, they're, they're a bit pampered. They're not hardened enough. They're not from the previous era when Mourinho could tell them all sorts of things. You are not doing well enough for me. Mm. You are sleeping on the job. You are doing quite well. These ones, you have to address them differently. They are from I think a different the current age. group of players ought to have uh, mm -hmm. found the error of Sir Alex Ferguson. You remember him, you know, even uh, oh, yes. Yes. firing a player at the petrol station <laughs> <laughs> when he disagreed with Teddy Sheringham, even David Beckham. But himself. that was then. Yes. That was then. That's so how the dynamics guys, of football has changed. The dynamics of football has changed. I was watching a pep talk at full time this morning. Uh, Manchester City having lost to Manchester United in a derby and they had a team meeting immediately after the game in the in, in the changing rooms yeah. and Pep Pep took most of the meeting saying come down guys come down guys because mm -hmm. people are opinionated people are talking you're telling them come mm -hmm. down but they're saying no look this is what we're doing wrong those yeah. like different guys giving their views and today's manager you have to be able to step back a bit and listen to it. And listen to these guys. Let them ventilate. Let them get out their steam. And then you give the final word. And even that final word, you have to give it very diplomatically, very persuasively. Because times have changed. Even times parenting has changed. Money empowers people. Uh, I mean, look, this is an uncle nephew example. When I was growing up, the uncle nephew relationship was very different. But now here we are, uncle nephew dealing with. <laughs> Like as though we're we're buddies. Laughing like as though we're going out for a drink after this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, this particular evening, it's 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 uh, equally another huge clash pitting Chelsea against Manchester City in the yes. semi-final stage yes, of yes, FA yes. Cup. Of course, it will be live on KBC Channel One, <coughs> and you can catch the action, the comfort of your uh, sitting room or bedroom. Uh, considering there is curfew beyond <laughs> to 8 p.m., so you might not be allowed to go to the nearest entertainment joint and catch the action. So let's talk about your team city uh, up against Chelsea. Yes. You said just before we kicked off the show that you seeking to go for a treble. Yes. Possible? Very possible. And in seeking fact, to emulate on Bayern last season. Yeah. I mean, see, we have to. We have to get what Bayern did last season. Now Bayern has raise the benchmark the benchmark before was a treble now it's gone way higher and pep has to prove he is the best every trophy is within reach i mean i can possibly say the premier league is wrapped up yes so now it's just <laughs> between the fa and the champions league and then carabao down at the end but the fa cup is where dreams are made every team in england everybody wants it 
the biggest upsets come in the you know like i did not expect southampton in the in the semi final tomorrow but you know it happens so even today anything can happen anything can happen rather i expect phil foden to show up it's been amazing man i phil think foden is the man to point watch. that he has to be included in the england national team for for euros yeah and he impresses me more because i mean for every one goal that phil foden scores he's missed like five <coughs> In the same game, he'll miss like five chances. So he just try, 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 try. That work ethic, you know. And that is why Pep has taken a shine to him. Because Pep likes that work, you know. Which, so, it's, it's Man City's game. It's Man City's game. It's Man City's game. Yourself, what do you think? True, it's Man City's game. And they're like a pack of lions, especially in the final third. Today, but Tuchel Golo has also Conte. been yeah, marvelous yeah, that's what since I'm taking at. charge of <laughs> Stamford Bridge and Mason Mount yeah, has what been, you know, that's in the form of his life. Um, yeah. Today, N'Golo Conte, I'm told he's match fit, so mm -hmm. he's going to have the biggest Where's the battle? In midfield or in it, defense? Uh, for Chelsea, the battle actually is in taking the game to City. That's what they've got to do. And they've got to do it from the get-go. I hope they review the tape of the Manchester derby when just the other day when Manchester United played Manchester City and how Manchester United approached that game they went for the scruff of Manchester City's necks they didn't give them room they didn't mm -hmm. give them time to think breathe nothing that's what Chelsea have to do today and try and score that early goal that early goal disorients you it brings you back to reality it and it's nothing as painful up. as that because it takes you time to readjust and the FA Cup is the underdogs cup. Mm -hmm. This game, Chelsea are the underdogs. No matter how well they are doing, City are obviously the kings of England. And they are strutting the field like it. But I would hedge my bets on Chelsea. If they whack their socks off and go for the kill right from the get-go. But also, N'Golo Conte today is going to work overtime. Because when you look at what City have to offer in attack, that will require someone who can wipe that area like a wiper proper. I, mm -hmm. I was told he's match fit. I reckon he's match fit. If he starts the game, he's the guy who's going to have the workload today. I mean, how do you keep off Foden, Mares, Undoan is coming, Sterling? I mean, he and I speak well there. Yeah? Uh, so you have to really, really work. They have to work very, very hard for this win. It's possible they can do it. And I wish them all the best in this underdog's cup. And now we're going to wind up. But before we do, uh, Anthony Joshua <coughs> will soon be fighting uh, the big man Tyson, Tyson Fury. Fury. And I think the site has been approved. Eddie Hunt, the promoter, has yeah. confirmed the fight will be on. What's your expectation like? My expectation is for the Gypsy King to rise. <laughs> <laughs> Gypsy uh, King to rise? The Gypsy King, I mean, he is still the lineal. World Heavyweight Champion of the World. Yes. So Tyson Fury now the WBC World Heavyweight Champion of the World. I mean, currently still unbeaten. AJ got his defeat a while back. I mean, Tyson Fury will stop AJ, no doubt, anywhere, anytime, mm -hmm. most likely in the seventh round. Because I think he's stronger, faster, he can take the punches. And all round, he's just a better, uh, he's a more diverse fighter he moves like he's he's a welterweight i guess he's just too fast moving all over that ring he's more aggressive yes and you were saying he's something about aj that uh, <laughs> aj is more of a gentleman and boxing is kill or be killed that's the yes. reality boxing there's no two bits boxing is not soccer boxing mm -hmm. is not any other sort of sport that Calls it, itself, it doesn't want lenience. Calls itself, you need to yeah, let the bad man out. Content spot. You need to leave that bad man out mm -hmm. and come in mean, real proper hard. And that's not AJ. Mm -hmm. But I hope he's worked on it because there was a time he got beat because yeah. of being too much of a gentleman. And that sort of switched a bulb in his head. I tip Fury to win, but if AJ can be aggressive enough, yeah. then a few hearts will be broken. A few hearts will be broken. Always a pleasure doing this every Saturday, one, two, three. Touchline is the show Maxwell Wasika is my name and, of course, nephew. Uh, uncle. Uncle. <laughs>
<laughs> These guys are on the same set this particular afternoon discussing international football. This one supports Bayern Munich. It was eliminated from UEFA Champions League football. Jimmy is a Manchester City diehard looking forward to a treble from his team. And he says that this time round they will emulate on what Bayern Munich did last season. And if possible even surpass because they are in the FA this evening playing against Chelsea. They have qualified to semi-final of UEFA Champions League football up against their equally <laughs> money team in Paris Saint Germain and obviously we can authoritatively state that they have won English Premier League title. Let's wait and see how that pans out but let's continue with the conversation. Hashtag touchline Y254 to Asike Maxwell at Y254 channel. Always a pleasure coming through. Oh, thank you. And uh, it it's been nice seeing you exchange you know, interesting conversation as, matters, as far as matters football is concerned. Jimmy, yes, pleasure sir. having you this particular Thank afternoon. you for having me. Thank you for having me. Well, it's a pleasure. Stay safe and continue, you know, complying with COVID-19 protocols as we seek, you know, uh, getting rid of this monster, COVID. Always a pleasure. God bless. Nice weekend.